Imagine this, it's late at night and you've just gained remote code execution on another server. You have a foothold in their environment now, but how do you take this even further? Welcome to NetSec Explain, where I give you practical guides to advanced security topics. This video is gonna be the first in a short series talking all about network pivoting. Throughout the series, we're gonna be covering a number of common challenges that you'll face on a typical red team engagement. So let's get started. Looking at the first scenario, we are on an unprotected network with a compromised system. What's special about this is that the system has access to a protected network through a VPN. We can connect to it via SSH, but we want to be able to route our traffic from the attacker machine to the protected network. Here's how we do it. So to get started, we're going to do a basic SSH tunnel. Uh, so to set up an SSH tunnel, there are three ways to do it. You can do a reverse tunnel, a local tunnel, or the one that we're going to do, which is a dynamic tunnel. So to do that, we're going to do SSH-D, and then we're going to set our port to 9050. You'll see why later. And then we're going to log in with our target system, which is going to be Windows 10. We've just created a dynamic tunnel. Now, if you've ever used SSH before, you'll notice nothing here has changed. We're already in the target system, but I'm going to show you something special. If we go to Firefox and we set up a Foxy proxy, this is just going to be an easier way for us to change our proxy settings very quickly. Otherwise, we can go into the Firefox settings themselves and change the proxy settings. So instead, I'm going to edit a proxy that I already have set up. Now, whenever you do an SSH dynamic tunnel, you're going to set this as a SOX4 type proxy. Now, the tunnel opens up on local ports. So in this case, we set our port as 9050, which means that anything going to that local port is going to go through the proxy and out the other side. So here we have our IP address as 127.0.0.1, which is our local system, and then of course our port 9050. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. I'm going to turn on our pivot proxy. Actually, before I do that, let me show you that I have nothing up my sleeve. So I've remoted into the Hack the Box network. This is the free VPN network. I'm not going to show you any walkthroughs, but I'm only going to use it as a way to demonstrate how to access external networks. So the target system that we're going to be looking at is 10.10.11.217. So if I go to 10.10.11.217, I'm not going to be able to get through. So this is going to keep trying and keep trying until it finally times out. But if I stop that and jump over to pivot, and I try the same address, right? 10.10.11.217, it loads. So what we're doing is we're going from our Kali system through the Windows 10 host via SSH, and then we're porting that with the dynamic tunnel so that we can reach the target network on the other side. Awesome. That's well and good for web proxies. But what if we wanted to do something like an Nmap scan or any other sort of command line utility to go through it? Well, this is where we're going to use a special tool called proxy chains. Now, proxy chains, it can get a little complicated if you're not used to it. So I'm going to walk you through step by step, just the quick and easy way to use it. So if we open our terminal real quick, I'm going to open up a new window or a new tab. And then we're going to take a look at our proxy chains config. So we're going to do sudo nano, and then it's located in Etsy proxy chains conf I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And of course, type in my password since we're using sudo, and you'll see a lot of comments in here. I'm going to be honest, for our purposes, none of this is important. The only thing that matters is what's at the very bottom of this config file. So I'm going to hit page down until we hit the bottom, and here we go. So we have our proxy list, and everything below this header, the proxy list header, is what we need to do to configure our proxy chains. So just like we did for our web proxy, we're going to set up a SOX4, we're going to point it to our local host, and then the port that we specified, 9050. Now, that's already been set for me. If it hasn't been set for you and you're following along, please go ahead and do that. So I'm going to press Control-X to exit out of Nano, 
And now we can use proxy chains. So the easiest way to do this is proxy chains, and we're just gonna go ahead and run a simple nmap command. So nmap, and then we're gonna do our 10.10.11.217. This is gonna be our target that we're gonna be focusing on. What's special about the proxy tunnels or the SOX4 proxies is when you use nmap default settings, that's not gonna work here. So typically nmap will do a SYN scan or you'll see it as a SS scan. So this is the quicker scan, but that's not gonna work through a proxy. It's gonna consider every port that it scans to be completely up and that's not gonna give you any useful information. So instead, what we're gonna do is the full TCP connect scan, which is gonna be ST. Uh, to keep things simple, we're gonna set this for the top ports uh, and we're only gonna do the top 10 ports. Uh, the rest of them aren't that important for this scenario. It also takes a little bit longer as it goes through a proxy just because of the way that the traffic is being routed. And then of course, the last thing that we're gonna do, if we just ran this, it's gonna go ahead and show every single port already open. So I find it helpful to do a dash SV scan to start doing a services scan. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this and I'll see you once it's finished. Okay, all done. This took uh, about two minutes. You can see here at the bottom, it took 113, uh, 113 seconds. So here we see that it automatically detects that every single port that was tested is opened, but we know that's not quite right. This is why I use the dash SV flag. So here we can see the only two ports that are actually open are the ones that you could identify versions for. So in this case, it's gonna be port 22, which is their open SSH 8.2, and port 80, which is their Apache web daemon. Cool. So far, we've covered the basics of network pivoting through SSH, but we're not done yet. If you wanna be a master of network pivoting, then you're gonna to have to learn how to do it in more ways than one. You might have noticed earlier that we're actually using a window system as our proxy point. That's not a mistake. You're never gonna have SSH on Windows in a real environment. So let's do this all over again, but this time with Metasploit. Now, because I'm lazy, we're gonna use the same SSH connection to launch a Meterpreter shell. So first I'm gonna start MSF console, and then we're going to go ahead and use the SSH login module. So we can easily search for it with search SSH login, and we can see it's that first one, auxiliary, scanner, SSH, SSH login. So I'm gonna use zero since that is our option. And we can do show options. I'm gonna set my R host as the remote target that we've always used, right? The 192.168.1.115. And then I'm gonna set my username and password like this. So we're gonna do set R host, 192.168.1.115 set username, windows 10, set password. And I'm not very clever when it comes to VM password, so it's just gonna be windows 10 all over again. And then finally, we're gonna go ahead and do run. So this is going to run our system and it spawned a shell. Now we can look at this shell with the session command. So sessions and we see our first session it's connected to windows through Kali via SSH. Um, now what we're going to do is actually use this SSH shell and upgrade it to a meterpreter shell. So that's going to be sessions dash u. We're going to type in our session one. Um, this is going to upgrade to meterpreter. It's going to start a handler. It's going to reverse connect. Now if you're following at home, one thing that I do want to point out is that I had to disable Windows Defender and the live defending uh, threat modeling that it does. Otherwise, it gets flagged super quickly, super easily. Metasploit and Meterpreter, very well-known systems. So I'm going to take a look at our sessions again. Now we have session two, and that's running our Meterpreter. So if I want to go into that, I can type sessions-i and then the number two. And now we're in our interpreter shell. I can do sysinfo to see the system information. So we're running Windows 10. Um, and then if I want to exit out of here, instead of closing the session, if I type in exit, I want to background the process. So our session stays up and alert. 
Now, from here, we got to do a couple things. So the first thing that we need to do is tell Metasploit that there's actually routes on the target system that we want to be able to access. So there's a couple of ways to do that. But instead of showing you all of them, I'm going to show you the easiest. What we're going to do is we're going to use the auto route module. So we can do search auto route. And it's going to be this first one, this post multi manage auto route. So I'm going to use zero. I'm going to show the options. Now, by default, it wants the session that you want to route through. So in our case, um, this only accepts interpreter sessions. So in our case, that's going to be our session two. So I'm going to set the session to two. Set session two. And then just go ahead and run that. Now it automatically detected a number of routes in our system. So we can see what all they are by just typing in route. And so we see that we have access to a couple 10 networks through session two. From here, we go right back to what we had to do with our SSH. We need to set up a SOX4 proxy. In Metasploit, we're going to do that with the SOX proxy module. So we're going to search SOX. And then we see that for number zero, auxiliary server SOX proxy. So we're going to use that. And we're going to show our options. So here, if we wanted to use a proxy version five, which is the default here, uh, then we can set a username and password. For our case, we're not going to use a proxy five, but we're going to use SOX proxy four. So the first thing we're going to change is our version. So we're going to set version to four A. And then we're going to set our server host to local host because we don't want to host access to this remote server to anybody else on our local network, right? That's just bad OPSEC. So let's go ahead and fix that. Set serve host 127.001. So it only serves to us. And then we're going to change our server port just like we did earlier to 9050. So we're going to set serve port 9050. And then we're going to go ahead and hit run. So this is going to set up our SOX proxy for us. And once that's set, you can just hit enter a couple times. It won't show any indication. Uh, we can see the proxy in the background by typing jobs. So this is going to show us that auxiliary server SOX proxy. Uh, you can also see it with the open port. So if we did netstat dash TLPN, this is going to be our regular netstat command. Uh, we can see that 9050 is in fact listening on our local host. And just like before, we use proxy chains. So proxy chains nmap dash sv dash st. We're only going to do the top 10 ports and then we're going to hit our target again 10, 10, 11, 217. And let's go ahead and let this run. Awesome. And just like last time, we see that port 22 is open with their open SSH and port 80 is open with their Apache daemon. It took about the same amount of time, in this case, 110 seconds. So not too bad. Well, that's a wrap. In this video, we dove into the basics of network pivoting through both SSH and Metasploit. Through the rest of the series, we'll continue to tackle more common challenges that arise during a red team engagements and provide you with technical knowledge to enhance your skills. If you liked this video and found it helpful, let me know by dropping a like, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button to see more videos like this. I'll see you next time.